Hello guys, how are you? I'm Shobik and I welcome you to this new video of our channel. Uh, before starting this, let me apologize for not uploading a video in last one or two months because me and Tomong know we are quite busy in our daily job and we didn't have much time to produce a video separately. But today I have arranged some free time and I'm thinking about making a video. This video will be a, a fully conceptual video, a theoretical video, not sort of Arduino project or Raspberry Pi project. The thing I'll be talking about is Charlie Plexing. The name is weird, but the concept is pretty interesting here. Uh, I think you will like it and you will learn something new in this video. To know more about this and to know how to use this in your project, stay tuned with me to the end of the video. And so without making much delay further, let me start the video here. Before that, if you haven't subscribed to our channel till now, then please do it because we are very close to 5000 mark. And it will be very helpful from you if you can take us to the 5000 milestone as soon as possible. So please do subscribe and let's start this video now. So the topic for our discussion today is Charlie Plexing. I have already told you the name and I have already told you that it is a type of multiplexing. Now multiplexing does what? In Arduino project or in Raspberry Pi project, whatever, wherever we use multiplexing, we use it to reduce the number of pins requirement. Maybe that is with a 7 segment display or a LED matrix, whatever it is. We do it to reduce the number of pin requirement to run a specific device. That is what multiplexing is. Chaliplexing also does the same thing. but it has some special purpose and special approach to where it applies and let me go through these topics one by one okay the next question what appears is why do we need it so for that let me give you a scenario assume that you are doing arduino project based on arduino uno which has total of around 16 io ports if you include the analog also and you are connecting some relays two or three sensors a 16 cross 2 lcd display a matrix keyboard and some other things you are connecting to the Arduino Uno and suddenly you realize you also need to connect a LED combination that is required there to demonstrate a state of the system and the total number of LED requirement is 12 LEDs. So you need 12 LEDs to control out of the Arduino Uno and you have used most of the ports and you don't have that many ports to accumulate and control the 12 LEDs. So in that kind of condition, this Charlie Plexing concept can help you a lot. So with Charlie Plexing, you can control 12 LEDs by using only 4 input output ports from the Arduino. If you want to control 20 LEDs, then you only need around 5 pins from your Arduino to control those 20 LEDs. How this works, I'll be telling you later, but let, I'm telling you just the figures to give you an interest why this is important. And if you are thinking from where I'm getting these numbers, there is a formula. So the formula is written here, number of LEDs equal to number of pins multiplied by number of pins minus 1. Here is the symbolic formula that is L equal to N minus 1 into N. So let me have a 20 LED sequence. I have 20 LEDs to control. So here 20 equal to N into N minus 1. And by solving for N, you will know that N is 5. Okay, so we'll need only 5 pins to control 20 LEDs. I was not aware of this concept earlier, but I have came to know this by doing some research because I have to make a Arduino binary clip. For this, there are requirements of 20 LEDs. Arduino don't have that many digital pins. So there we need to use the Charlie Flexing concept. And I'll be making this video also a detailed video how to make the Arduino binary clock with it. So stay tuned for the full tutorial it will be coming in some days maybe now how this chaliplexing works to know that first of all you have to know what is tri-state or tri-logic is now tri-state or tri-logic is nothing but a high impedance state of a circuit so if you put a terminal of a circuit into high impedance state that means the circuit is disconnected from the terminal so that terminal is cut it out from the whole circuit that is the tri-state concept and you need the tri-state concept here to use the Charlie flexing in your circuit. So you have to keep in mind that you also have to use that kind of microcontroller which supports the tri-state compatible 
circuit in built and you, our own Arduino Uno has that compatible IC that is at Mega 320 it supports this tri-state and to put an Arduino pin as high impedance state what you have to do you don't have to do anything other than putting the pin in input mode by this the pin will be in high impedance state and it will be open circuited from the circuit now I will be going to tell you how the circuit works so before starting let me tell you I will be using this abbreviated form FB and RB which will denote the case of forward bias and reverse bias respectively H will be high that is 5 volt coming out of the Arduino L will be ground and and whenever I will be writing OC around the terminal then you have to assume the terminal is cutted from the circuit you will obviously notice that LED turns on when it is in forward bias and every LED turns off when it is in reverse bias so I assume you know all these things and after that let me show you how uh, 2 pin Charlie flexing works so this is a circuit for 2 pin Charlie flexing you can see there are two terminals T1 and T2 so if we put high at T1 and low at T2 what will happen L1 will be in reverse bias and L2 will be in forward bias so L2 will light up and L1 will be off so in this condition L2 will light up and if we put the opposite thing L1 will light up so this is a 2 pin Charlie flexing but you will get the concept more clear in the 3 pin Charlie flexing so this here it goes this is the 3 pin Charlie flexing circuit and uh, there is 6 LEDs as you can see from where we get those 6 LEDs where the number because we have used the number of input pins as 3 and the uh, number of LED control can be controlled that is 3 into 3 minus 3 that is 6 so you can control 6 LEDs now how it works in this circuit let me take you to the first scenario that is putting T1 as high T2 as low and T3 as open circuit if T3 is open circuited then all these LEDs are not connected to T3 and these LEDs also have no chance to lit up but L1 is in reverse bias here and L3 is in forward bias so L3 will lit up so in this case L3 will lit up and other all LEDs will be off now if we change the polarity of T1 and T2 now L1 will be in forward bias and L3 will be in reverse bias so L1 will lit up so in this condition L1 lights up in this way the whole thing works and if you take another case like this put T1 as open terminal T2 as low and T3 as high so here we can disconnect all these LEDs from the circuit because this will not lit up obviously and L2 is in forward bias now and L4 is in reverse bias so L2 will lit up and all those other LEDs will be off so in this condition L2 lights up the LED L4 will lit up if we change the polarity of T2 and T3 so here it goes for this condition L4 will lit up now if we take the condition of the last state where T1 is low T2 is open circuited and T3 is high then what will happen all those LEDs which are connected to the T2 will be disconnected from the circuit so these LEDs has no chance to lit up but L5 now is in reverse bias and L6 is in forward bias so L6 will lit up but all other LEDs will be off so in this condition L6 lights up and if we reverse the polarity of T1 and T3 respectively from L to H and H to L then L5 will lit up so as you can see from this chart that using by for by using three pins only and by changing the state of those pins we can control six LEDs independently so this is how the Charlie flexing system works so if you look at the four pin Charlie flexing circuit it is quite different complex also and it goes more complex when you get to five pin Charlie flexing and the complexity goes higher and higher I'll show you an example where I have done the Charlie flexing circuit for three pin and you can see for just only for six LEDs the circuit quite complex so it is already recommended for you to make a PCB if you are using uh, this concept with five pins and more now if you want to uh, take a look how to draw this circuit for any number of pins then here it goes here I have four terminals T1, T2, T3 and T4 and first of all three LEDs are there in series 
with the same polarity from T1 to T4 and with this different direction from T4 to T1 and with four terminals we can control 4 into 4 minus 1 that is 12 LEDs so there are six LEDs left so every two LEDs will be attached between alternative terminals so these are the two LEDs that will be attached between T1 and T3 and these are the two LEDs that is attached from T2 to T4 and the last two LEDs always be connected with the extreme terminals that is T1 and T4 so this is how you can draw the circuit by your own so here you can see a circuit that I have made for me with six LEDs soldered on it and there are three terminals the whole circuit is based on three pin Charlie flexing concept and if we put the whole thing in the Arduino that is pre programmed then you can see the LEDs are lighting up individually that's how the whole thing works and if you look at the opposite side of the board you can see the soldering part the soldering is a hassle for this kind of concept because the routing is pretty difficult to do with more number of leds so it is always recommended to make a pcb for you that's it in this video if you liked it and if you learned something new then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel also don't forget to share this video with your friends with your project mates and so make them aware of this concept so that they can also use this Charlie flexing concept in their project and make it a more efficient one. Uh, I'll be also giving a full tutorial of the Arduino binary clock that I'll be making in recent future. So also for that stay tuned to this channel. Till then bye and take care.